everybody. Today we are going to talk about installing Linux Mint on a VirtualBox machine. I'll jump over installing VirtualBox. It's available from the website of Oracle. After you have downloaded it, it will be something like this. And the application has some virtual machines already installed. Or if it's a fresh installation, then you will have nothing installed in here. And we will start with how can we install a Linux distribution over this virtual box. First of all, you need to download the Linux version you want to install. So let's say here I will try to install Linux Mint. It's easy and basically you can go to linuxmint.com and here there will be a download web page. You can do similar things for any other distribution like Ubuntu or uh, Debian or other Linux distributions. It's very simple and only thing you need to do is downloading an ISO file, ISO file, which is a virtual image of the installation disk. Uh, basically it is an optical disk, but we don't use any optical disks anymore. Uh, and you can download it. Uh, depending on your computer architecture, it might be a 32 or 64 bits uh, architecture. Just download the, the version available for your uh, computer. And I'll select a mirror close to my location. Let's go for this one. Yes, and after the installation, you need to create a new virtual machine. Let's say I will have a new Linux installation. Oops. New Linux. You can name it as you wish. Uh, and the type of installation will be a Linux. And the version is the latest version available for 64 bits for now. You can go for other installations. I, th I think uh, they are pre installed versions. Uh, the VirtualBox downloads is and it makes an installation easily. But we will do our installation and I think there isn't any Mint version. So it is better you go with a generic version of the Linux. Let's say continue. Here you make the setup. It is for the allocation of the resources for the new machine. Let's say we will give 3 gigabytes of almost 3 gigabytes of uh, memory to the new machine. Uh, it's consumed from your uh, okay, you have a RAM installed for 8 gigabytes here, for example, in my computer, and you are allocating some part of this memory to the virtual machine. The rest will be still under the control of the current uh, operating system. Uh, basically, I have OS X installed and my virtual box is running over OS X, but you may have a virtual box on Windows or other operating systems, so the resources are shared between the your current operating system and the virtual box. Let's say we have allocated 3 gigabytes and now you set a, let's say you can use, okay, create a virtual hard disk. It is for the fresh installation or you can use a previously allocated hard disk already for the virtual box. Since it is a fresh installation, let's go with a create a virtual uh, hard disk now. And we use, there are several alternatives here. I will go with the virtual box disk image. It will be a file of my disk, or you can do some advanced installations. The uh, allocation will be dynamic or fixed. In the fixed installation, the space you have allocated will be separated from your current installation, and the current, win, uh, current operating system will not be able to access this size. Uh, this uh, allocated part, but in the fixed, uh, in the dynamically allocated, both operating systems can share the same partition. Okay, uh, it's asking for a name of the new disk. I will allocate a little bit higher because I want to install some applications over it, and you can also na name it as you wish. Here, the Linux allocation has been done and it's still powered off. We can start this machine. Okay, if you go with start. Since there isn't any image on this disk, it is a fresh disk, so it will not start with any file. Uh, and it will ask for an optical disk. You can select an optical disk here. Uh, and if you don't, you, you, uh, there will be a file prompt asking for the ISO file you have already downloaded from Linux Mint. And you can just show this file and start with this file. Uh, and you can install uh, and you can keep uh, installing from this step. Okay, uh, these are basic questions for my hardware access like the mouse, keyboard, and the display.
Okay, this is the installation screen. It, uh, it is preparing the installation screen for me. You can still use some Linux uh, applications, like there's a Firefox here, I think, and there's a terminal here. You can still use these applications. Okay, for example, here we have an access to the internet. It is uh, developed for installation, in installing time. Maybe you have some questions to ask on the internet, so you can just access to the internet through the installation screen. But we will not use any of these applications. We will directly go to the installation screen. So I double click the install Linux Mint icon on my desktop and it selects the languages here. You can select from any of these languages, I think. We will keep going on English. Okay, these are for uh, the third-party softwares. There's some packages already available in the in installation. And I also accept installing these third-party softwares. So uh, it will be a little bit bigger installation on the disk size. But there will be some applications already installed, so I will not deal with them after the installations. Okay, since it is a fresh installation, I can raise all the uh, disk and install from the scratch. This is the location. Uh, ext 4 fs is the new uh, file system available for the Linux installations. And there's a swap space. Swap space is mainly used as a virtual memory in Windows. It is a disk, a disk uh, part. You can use this part of disk as a part of memory. So, in for example, you are out of memory. Let's say you have allocated 4 gigabytes of memory, but an application tries to use, let's say, 10 gigabytes of memory. Then this web size is used. So I will keep them as they are and start the installation. Time zone is already selected. Let's try to see if we have Northampton. Uh, here it is, Massachusetts. Okay, these are the keyboard layouts. For example, you can have different alternatives of keyboard layouts, but we will keep going on like this. Asks for my name, username, and a password. Obviously, you can't see my password. Uh, okay, for the login, you can also um, if you are using this virtual machine installation for your, uh, for example, if you have an operating system scores and you will make some kernel hackings and probably you will compile your kernel and reboot the computer many times to try your new kernel. So it might be a good idea to keep it as login automatically. Otherwise, you can go with a password required. Uh, depends on your installation, uh, but it's just a notice for you, if you whether you use it for uh, your personal, for example, if it is a virtual box, again, you can use it as uh, uh, automatic login because starting a virtual box requires some credentials, authorizations. Depends on your installation, it's up to you. I think I can see the details from here. Yeah, this is the log screen. You can watch what the current installation is doing for now. Can I? Yeah, a little bit larger, I think. There are some problems, I think. GTK is Juno Toolkit, and there is a message. I think there is an installation problem over some of the modules, but we can check them later on. Probably you will not have any problems during the installations. Well, it has some info available here. It's better you read them. <laughs> well, we have LibreOffice. Previously, it was uh, OpenOffice, and much uh, earlier, it was uh, StarOffice. After they have some purchasing issues, so StarOffice has been sold, and then uh, Oracle has purchased uh, the OpenOffice project. Uh, actually Sun and Sun Microsystems was operating to OpenOffice project. So now it is LibreOffice. 
it's coming from the liberation you can use these uh, packages also we have steam for the gamers and minecraft for the games gamers again dropbox for sharing the files blender i i, I have no idea Jim is a powerful uh, it's uh, just going close to the Photoshop, let's say. It's an alternative to it in the Linux environments. Firefox, you probably know it already from the browsers arena. And VLC is a video playing tool. Wine is a good uh, Windows emulator. It is the shortcut of Windows emulator. And you can run some Windows applications on Linux boxes. It's emulating the Windows environment, so it is not a powerful and a pure native installation of Windows. So probably you may, you may face some problems running these uh, Windows applications, but it's still powerful and it's still on the progress. <laughs> Each year it is getting better and better. Also VirtualBox is another alternative we are using now. Uh, but you can install another VirtualBox inside of a VirtualBox to run another operating system. It is also somehow funny what else we have the desktop setups appearances and so on there is a package manager as far as I understand you can install some of these packages and the package installer is basically very useful because otherwise you need to compile all the source files and run them also another problem is following the track of the dependencies most of the packages comes with the dependencies, so in order to install one of these packages, you need to backtrack them and find which packages are dependent for this package. And you need to install all of them in the proper order, because sometimes some other packages might require some other uh, dependent packages. So these package managers are really, really helpful for installing something. Okay, I think it will take some time for installing these packages I'll cut the video here and then we will keep going on after the installation screens